Ah, hearing Alan you suck chance inside Brinchstone Arena tonight brings back fond memories to this Preds fan's heart of the 2017 Stanley Cup run. Alan. 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 You suck. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. Preds tie the St. Louis Blues 2-2. Two two. And then everybody's hands go up, way up, as the Preds win in the shootout 2-1 to one, and win the game 3-2 to two overall over the hated Central Division rival of theirs, the St. Louis Blues, winning both games of a home and home. Man. It only took three days, but I'm pretty sure the majority of Preds Nation has a festering anger for the St. Louis Blues and a certain suspended St. Louis Blues defenseman. UC Soros, who is starting in his second straight game for the Preds, is seeing the shots early and not letting anything by him. That would bode well for the Preds as just under eight minutes to go into the first period, as Rocco Gamardi knocks a puck down and sauces it over to his consistent line mate, Nick Benino, who just in front of the left face off circle fires it over Jake Allen's shoulder, and it's 1 0 Preds. Truly amazing how the Preds can have one center making $6 million and he's sitting up in the press box, while another center is making $4 million centering the third line and he is playing like He's playing on the first line as Benino has just scored his 10th goal of the season and it's not even December yet. Not even four minutes later, off of a face-off circle to Allen's right, the puck comes to Dante Favreau. He gets it. He fires it over to Phil Forsberg who gets it at the net. Callie Yarncroak tries to corral the rebound before in skates Ryan Johansson and backhands roof job past Jake Allen. And it's 2-0 Preds, as that would be the score after the first period, with the Blues and the Preds each getting 10 shots on goal. During the second period, Adam Vingen of The Athletic tweeted out that he saw a 10-year-old kid with a sign that read, Avenge Arvidsson. You know how they say there's a child inside all of us? Well, that kid is inside every single Preds fan right now. The Preds were keeping up the pressure on Allen in the second period, but couldn't buy another goal quite yet, even out shooting the Blues 13-6 for the period. And not burying another goal would cost the Preds, as off the rush, David Perrone is able to bury his own rebound past UC Soros to make it 2-1 Preds. Preds PK looking a lot more solid these last two games against division-leading St. Louis Blues than it did last Thursday against Vancouver. And we're off to the third period with the Preds still up by one. Again, early in the third, the Preds getting a lot of chances, but they just can't bury anything past Jake Allen. Even on a power play early in the third, Michael Grinland, who is playing in his 500th game, is right in front of Allen, but just can't get it past him. But they don't ask you how many shots you get on net, but how many goals you score into the net as Rocco Grimardi hangs on to the puck a little too long in the defensive zone. And it's stolen by the St. Louis Blues and Braden Shen ultimately scores past UC Soros, tying the game at two. Hang on to your seats, it's going to be a hell of a final six minutes of regulation. UC Soros appears to make a hell of a save on Blues center Tyler Bozak, but upon further review, it is revealed that Tyler pulled the classic Craig Smith move, which is to stop your own puck from going into the opponent's net with your own stick. And we're off to overtime, tied at two. The Preds would have the majority of the chances in overtime, including Philip Forsberg backhanding it off the crossbar. They outshot the Blues 5-1 to one in overtime. You could tell the Preds wanted this game more than the Blues did, but would fate answer their call as we head to the shootout? In the shootout in the first round, David Perron scores and Matt Duchesne is stopped. In the second round, Ryan O'Reilly hits the post and Ryan Ellis shoots it wide. Third round, UC Soros stops Braden Shen. Then it's all up to Philip Forsworth to score the Preds' first shootout goal of the season, and he does, and we're off to round four. 
in the fourth round, the Blues' Robert Thomas can't give the Blues the lead and the Preds are up for their final shot again. And then it's time. Lavi calls on the man who just got called up that very day to fill in Victor Arvidsson's roster spot. He's been a part of an active 10-game winning streak for Nashville's AHL farm team, the Milwaukee Admirals, number 26 in gold, Daniel Carr. Hollywood couldn't have scripted it better than this. Daniel skates in and he waits and he waits and he fires it before Jake Allen can get his glove on it. Preds win. Preds win. So to summarize, yes, it would have been nice to get all four points and the Blues get nothing over these two games. But if I had asked any of you going into this home and home against a division leading Blues, considering how we've been playing, if you would have taken four points straight up regardless of what the Blues got, yeah, most of you would have taken it. Yeah, without the loss of 33, sure, but still, most of you would have taken this. And with losses by Vancouver, Calgary, Vegas, and Minnesota on the out-of-town scoreboard tonight, things definitely went the Preds' way. I think we're finally heading in the right direction. And lastly, just your friendly reminder, with this win, the Preds are just three wins away from 800 for a franchise. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching as always. Hit like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you want to see the Preds keep winning for RV. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Canuck for Liberty. Tell all your friends about this up and coming Preds dedicated channel. And RV, get well soon.